Welcome back to AP Physics C, Work Non-Conserved, Part 2. Here we go. A 1.86 kilogram block is held in place against the spring with a force of 18 newtons. Okay, so there's 18 newtons here. Okay, the block is projected with a velocity of 1.2 meters per second. The block descends a ramp and increases its velocity to 1.9 meters per second. The track is frictionless along A to B. Ooh, okay. Uh, the block enters a rough section between from B to E. Okay. The coefficient of kinetic friction is a 0.28. So this is going to be 0.28. The velocity of the block is 1.47 at point C. Okay, so this is 1.4 meters per second. The block stops at point D. Velocity equals zero. Okay. What is the height of the ramp? Okay. So there's a lot of information here, but not too much that we really have to look out for. So we want to look out for two points, something before, uh, uh, before it goes down the hill and after it goes down the hill. So I'm going to look at the block, uh, right before it goes down the hill and then right after it goes down the hill. So I'm just going to do mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final. So at the very beginning, we have kinetic energy initial, and then we have gravitational potential energy initial. This is going to equal, at the very end, if we put the zero line here, which most people would do, we would put have kinetic energy final. So let's see what we have. We have one half mass, 1.86, velocity, 1.2 squared, plus mass, 1.86, gravity, 10, height, which we're looking for, is equal to one half m, 1.86, Whoops. Uh, v squared, which is 1.9 squared. Okay. Uh, 1.86 is on every part of this equation, so let's just cancel that out. And now let's just find what height is. I'm going to start from the right side. 0.9 squared times 0.5 minus 1.2 squared times 0.5 uh, divide by 10, and we get around 0.11 meters. 0.11 meters. Okay. I know there's a lot of information, but remember, just you're, many times in physics, you're just going to be looking at two points, and then that'll help you to uh, give you the answer. Moving on. Similar kind of question, it looks like. A 0 0.8 kilogram block, okay, mass equals 0 0.8 kilograms, okay, is held in place against a spring with a force of 67 newtons. Okay, so seven newtons. The block is projected with a speed of 1.2 meters per second. The block descends a ramp and increases velocity to 1.9 meters per second. Okay, 1.9 meters per second. Okay. At the bottom, the track is frictionless between A and B. The block enters a rough section from B to E. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.39. Okay, let me do that. 0.39. The velocity of the ramp uh, is 1.4 at uh, meters per second at point C, the block stops at point D. Okay, velocity equals zero. What is the spring constant of the spring? Okay, so let's figure this out. Hmm, how are we going to do this? Do, 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 do. Spring constant. Okay, so we know hmm, the force of the spring is equal to Kx, but we don't know how much it's compressed. So that's not really going to help us. So let's figure out, well, we know at the beginning, it's all elastic potential energy. And then over here, it turns into all kinetic energy. So let's find out how much elastic potential there is. So we're going to do one half K X squared. Well, we don't know any of that information is equal to the kinetic energy over here. So one half M 0.8 uh, V squared, which is 1.2 squared. So we know that at the very beginning, it has a total energy of, let me see, 1.2 squared times 0.8 times 0.5. So 0 0.5, I'm going to call it, uh, let's just be more specific, 0 0.56 uh, joules. Okay, so that's how much elastic potential energy it has. I'm going to circle this for now because it's going to be important. Another thing that we should know is that uh, force of the spring is equal to kx, okay? So we know two things. What we have is we don't know k, we don't know x, but what we do have is we have these two equations here. Let me erase this actually for now. We have this 1 half kx squared is equal to 
one half point eight one point two squared, and we have force of the spring, which is seven sixty seven, is equal to k x. So what we can actually do now is we can do some substitution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute for x. So x uh x is equal to sixty seven divided by oops divided by k. Sixty seven divided by k. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this and I'm going to substitute it right here. So we have one half k x squared, which is going to be sixty seven divided by k squared, is going to equal and well I forget what we what do we have one point two squared times point eight times point five uh, zero point five seven six. So now that we have this, oops, now that we have that, we can try to uh, find what k is because now we only have one missing variable. So let me kind of erase some things, and then let's figure out what this k is. All right, so we have one sixty seven squared. Uh, one of the k is gonna go out. So let me just okay. Let me actually let me write things out. One half k sixty seven squared, which is four four eight nine, four four eight nine divided by k squared. So one of these k's cancel out. This is gonna be equal to zero point five seven six. Now let's try to isolate this. So I'm just going to 0.5 times 4489. I'm going to bring k to the other side and divide by 0.576. And then we get k as the answer of 3896.7 Newton per meter. Okay. All right, moving on. A 0 0.2 kilogram package is released from rest at point A. It slams down the track and reaches point B with a speed of 4.8 meters per second. From point B, it slides on a level surface a distance of 3 meters to point C where it comes to rest. What is the coefficient of friction on the horizontal surface? Okay, let's write things up. Mass, 0 0.2 kilograms. Uh, point B here, velocity is equal to 4.8 meters per second. Uh, what is the coefficient of friction on the horizontal surface? Mu k. Don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this point here to this point here. So let's figure that out. Mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. At the very beginning, we have kinetic energy. And we have work of friction because we see that it's going to come to a stop. And this is all going to equal zero. No potential energy, no kinetic energy, no elastic potential energy. So we have 1 half mass, 0.2, V, 4.8 squared. Uh, plus the force of friction, um, okay, I guess I'll, I'll do that. Force of friction times the displacement, so it's displaced three meters. And what this is going to equal is, uh, what, what I should say, times cosine of 180, because this block, the force of friction is going this way as it moves to the right, is equal to zero. So now let's figure out what force of friction is. 4.8 squared times 0 0.2 times 0 0.5, bring that to the other side, divide by 3, and then we see the force of friction is equal to 0 0.77 Newton. But now we still have to find the coefficient of friction. So we know force of friction is equal to the normal force times, oops, times the coefficient of friction, and that's what we're looking for. So force of friction is 0 0.77. Normal force is going to be 0 0.2 times 10, 2, mu. Now we can find mu. 0 0.77 divided by 2. We get 0 0.384. Uh, and that's our answer there. Uh, part B. How much work is done on the package by friction as it slides down the arc from A to B? Okay, so now uh, let me erase this. So I'm going to erase this. So now we're looking at two different points. We want to know how much work does friction do while it goes down the arc. So let's erase all of this. So what we should know is we're going to look at this first point here at A, and then the second point here at B. And let's look at it again. Mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. At the very beginning, we have potential energy. And then there's going to be the work done by friction through this process plus uh, work of friction is equal to, and then there's all kinetic energy here. Kinetic energy. So this is going to be mass 0.2, gravity 10, 
height, the same as the radius, 1.6, plus the work of friction, which we're looking for, is equal to 1 half m, 0.2, v squared, which is 4.8 squared. And now let's find what the work of friction is. 0.2 times 10 times 1.6. Then we have to subtract or bring that to the other side. 0.5 times 0.2 times 4.8 squared. And then we get the work of friction is negative point, negative 0 0.896 joules. Okay, so that's the work to, of uh, done by the friction through this R. Okay, all right, uh, let's look at this one. A uh, golfer badly misjudges the putt, sending the ball only one fourth of the distance to the hole with the initial velocity V initial. If the force of resistance is constant, what speed what initial speed will get the ball into the hole? Okay, so we have it over here. And we want to know, uh, they went four times as much in order to get to the hole. So let's try to think about the energy of everything. Mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final. So at the very beginning, there's going to be kinetic energy uh, with the balls moving at a certain velocity. And there's going to be a work of friction. And then at the very end, when it reaches the hole, there's going to be nothing. There shouldn't, it shouldn't be moving. There shouldn't be gravitational potential. There's no spring, so it's zero. So we have one half mv squared plus the force of friction times the displacement, I'm going to call it d, times cosine of 180 is equal to zero. So what we're going to notice is we're wondering about how much, let me just change this, one half mv squared. How much does velocity need to change in order for displacement to change? So we know this displacement has to change by a factor of 4. So we need to change this by a factor of 4. We know this is going to be negative, so if we bring this to the other side, we need to have this also, this velocity also change by a factor of 4. Okay? So we could say instead of cosine 180, what we could do is we could just erase this, and we could bring it to the other side, and we could say 1 half mv squared is equal to force of friction times 4d. So if the displacement tends by a by a factor of 4, that means this velocity has to change by a factor of 2 so that both sides are equal to the same amount. So the velocity has to change by a factor of 2 in order to go 4 times further. Alright, one last question. This one is pretty difficult, so try to stay with me. A 1500 kilogram rocket needs to be needs to launch with a speed of 50 meters per second. Okay, so let me draw that out. So this is 1500 kilograms uh, it needs to be launched at 50 meters per second in order for it to gain a, a speed boost it will start from rest on top of a ramp that is 53 degrees at the bottom the ramp turns upward and launches the rocket vertically okay? the engine provides a constant uh, forward thrust of 2000 newtons okay force of the thrust 2000 newtons and friction of the ramp is a constant 500 newtons okay force of friction, 500 newtons. How far from the base of the ramp should uh, the ramp, uh, should the rocket start? So we're looking for this, I'm going to call this X right here. Whew! Okay, this is going to be a tough one. Stay with me. So let's look at mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy fine. Oh, whoops. Plus work not conserved because we have other forces plus work non-conserved is equal to mechanical energy final. So at the very beginning, we have gravitational potential energy. At the very beginning, uh, it starts from rest, so no kinetic energy, uh, no elastic potential energy, but we do have the work from friction, it's going to be slowing it down, but we, and we also have the work from the thrusters. So we have two works that's happening as this is going. And then at the very end, it's going to go at the bottom here and lift off. It's going to lift off with a certain speed, kinetic energy. And I guess that's pretty much it. All right? All right, so let's figure this out. Uh, so 1, 1,500, that's the mass, gravity 10, uh, and it has a certain height, we don't know, h. Plus the work of friction, which is going to be the force of friction, which is uh, 500 times the displacement, which we don't know, we're going to call that x, times cosine 180, because it goes in the opposite direction. 
plus the work of the thrust, which is the force of the thrust, which is 2,000. The displacement, we don't know, we're going to call that x. And the force of the thrust and the displacement go in the same direction, so we call this cosine of 0, which is just 1, is equal to the 1 half mass, 1,500 v squared, uh, where at the very bottom it needs to go 50 meters per second. Okay. One problem here is we have we have two unknowns. We have h and we have x. So we don't know what this height is. However, what we should know is height is equal to x divided by sine of 53. If we use some trig, we know that the this side h here is going to, oh, not sine of. It's going to be x times sine of 53. Sorry. H is going to be equal to, oh, let me, let me actually, let me do a little, let me do the math so I don't confuse people and myself. So if we do sine of 53, this is going to equal to opposite H uh, divided by x. So H is equal to x times sine of 53. Okay. So now let me simplify a lot of this. So this is 15,000 times, instead of H, I'm going to put x times sine of 53. And instead of sine of 53, I'm just going to put the number. So sine of 53, which is 0 0.8. So this is going to be 0 0.8. Plus, and then 500 and cosine of 180, I'm going to put negative 500 x. Plus, and then this is cosine of 0, so I'm just going to plus 2,000 x is equal to 1 half. 0.5 times 1,500 times 50 squared. Let's see. Oh, we got a huge number. 1, 8, 7, 5, 0, 0, 0. Okay. And now let's try to simplify some things. Uh, okay, so I'm going to 1,500, 15,000 uh, times 0. 0.8. And now I'm going to do minus 500 plus 2,000. And then what I have is uh, 13,500x is equal to 1,875,000. Now let's figure out what x is, what we're looking for. 1,875,000 divided by 13,500, we get 138.9 meters. So that's how far it needs to be in order to rock it out of here. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. I hope this made sense. This was definitely a hard problem, but thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next one where we talk about some graphs.